Mike Jones, Azrael here, like always, and yes, we're still doing a little bit of the E3 stuff. I know it's been over for a while. I'm sure everybody's sick and tired of E3, but you know, I'm just I'm just wrapping up. I got about two or three more uh, of uh, E3 stuff. We got Babylon as uh, Babylon's Fall, and I think Resident Evil 2. I don't know if I'll be covering that. Uh, and Ori and the Will of the Wisp. So, and I actually probably won't be doing Resident Evil because. I don't care about two. Anyways, this is about uh, the new Assassin's Creed. Assassin's Creed after Origin, everybody was so skeptical about Origin. Origin comes out and everybody's like, damn. We kind of thought, you know, that when you took that year off that you are going to come back and give us just a extra special pile of shit. And maybe some people feel that way. And, but a lot of people were pleasantly surprised with the fact that it wasn't just the same old, same old. Maybe it's Egypt. I'm a big fan of Egyptian mythology and the... And the world of that kind of, you know, thing. And so, uh, it's really hard to mess up, I think, in Egyptian story. You got the Great Pyramids. It's just, it's all really cool and fascinating and always a lot of mystery. So, it's always really fun to get into that kind of world. And, you know, so, and they didn't let us down. The combat, the boats, the, the alligators, the Nile, all that stuff was just interesting along with the main story. And, yeah, it was just fun to watch. Now we're getting into to Greece, and that's going to be um, just as incredible. Greek mythology, Greek mythology, and all the stuff that comes with that. I think it's just going to be 10 out of 10. I hope it's good. A lot of people are a little scared that it's going to be a reskinned Origins, but in Greece, let's hope we get something a little better. Maybe some new mechanics. And I know this opening is taking a long time, so let's just get into it, check it out, see what it's all about. Let's hope it's good. Uh, it looks good. I, you know, I'm How can a child save us all? Uh, uh, if he's sentenced to die. A reskinned origin? Tell me, Nicolas. It's all about the story. Tell me before you let our son go. <sighs> Nicolas. <sighs> Goodbye, my son. Where we begin? Spartans. Be fine. That's the best. Who we will Spartans. Become. We're good. Before you, I see a path. Oh. Built by friendship and family. Love. It's looking and good, loss. man. War and bloodshed. Oh, yeah, there it is. Spartan kick, baby. Ship combat. All right, bring it back a little bit of the black sails. But maybe updated you with bows. Sent by the gods to protect this world. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Leonidas spear. You carry the blade of Leonidas. Act like it. Woo! <laughs> bum bum bum. <laughs> that was good. Right, that was a good scene. Across the mountains and the seas. Remember, Ooh. the fate of Greece journeys with you. Just look at all the different looks. Assassin's Creed uh, Odyssey. Watch the official gameplay walkthrough. It's looking real snazzy here. I'm thinking... Is, so... I want to say this, but I also uh, it's I want to kind of like talk about how I think Assassin's Creed could be better, and and that's not just gonna say about the whole um um what do you call it? So like if we compared this or we merged the systems, uh, the, the I, I don't know how to phrase it. If we put the stuff from another game in this game, I think this game would be better. Now, I want to preface that I'm not actually a fan of this game as an RPG. Um, I think it's too casual for an RPG, and I was not a fan of the story. And that's a very unpopular opinion. Um, but The Witcher. Like, I did not like The Witcher 3. I, d I don't care about it. It's not my top million favorite games ever. It's just not. Uh, maybe it's because I'm just such a huge fan of Bethesda and The Elder Scrolls, where... You know, there's quick looting in Witcher. 
I, I don't think that should be a thing. I think RPGs should be a little bit more thought out, methodical. You should loot what you need. Not everything in that barrel is something you could just sell, right? In, a, in, in Skyrim, let's say, not everything in a barrel is usable, and it doesn't sell for a lot. It, but everything in Witcher, there's just a lot of crap that you're like, yeah, let's just add to my inventory, why not? And in, like, say, a Skyrim, it's like, no, I don't have the, the carrying capacity to get something that's worth five gold. So with that being said, where Assassin's Creed, I think, falls short is kind of like the in-game mechanics. Now, I am somebody that absolutely despises the whole jumping from future to past. I hate that about Assassin's Creed. It is the worst part of the game. And it doesn't even matter if they do a good job of, of kind of break, break, bringing you from the past back into the future. I think it's unnecessary. If anything, I think it would be way, 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 way better. Personal opinion is if it went... You, I'm stuttering a lot because it's like there's so many things going on. I'm trying to like think and communicate them and I'm just not able to. In Origins, there was that whole when you killed somebody, you went into that whole like fog realm and they said, you think you can do this? You think blah, blah, And you're like, ah, well, you know, fuck you guy. Sucks to suck. And then you, you, you know, you killed him finally and you took like the feather or whatever it is. They should make it like that with your guy in that weird realm talking to the person in the future as if they were talking over radio to radio except you don't perceive it as radio to radio it's in your mind you know that's how they're communicating with you and it's like you're going from the past and instead of going to the future you meet in the middle and like a limbo that because doing quests in modern day where you're like running away from people and stuff like that i understand that they probably want to do that they they want the story of the uh, uh, the Templar or whatever in the future just kind of trying to rule the world and maybe one of their final games that maybe has some real important story stuff you add that in there but I think for Assassin's Creed Origins and Odyssey it should m with these huge like um, I'm trying to think of the name it's just like again so many things to think and say the England one with the twins that one could have been done whatever. It was a cool story. I liked it. I liked that, you know, uh, Industrial Revolution era. I think that's really fun. It's one of my favorite eras um, for, for movies, games, whatever. But that one, who gives a shit? You could have done whatever you wanted. Egypt, Greece, these are some of, like, incredible, beautiful parts of the world. And the mythology from them is just, it's some of the most prominent. And I don't think, I think that it should, the story should take a back seat as far as what goes on in the future and it, you should kind of just be more rooted in the past and you should have that weird meeting in the middle between somebody in the future and someone in the past and they should have dialogue talking about how you're getting like feral because you look how you look maybe the game starts out you meet in that middle round or middle ground and it's kind of you back in your normal clothes but the background behind you is like grease and the more and more you do the story and you show up to the to talk to the person they 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 don't actually see you, obviously. It's just perceived that way, right? And But it's the way they talk, or the way you talk in the game, to where now, instead of showing up in your normal modern clothes, now instead of just seeing the background, now you're like wearing more and more stuff. And they're like, are you okay? You seem like you're getting lost in this world. And eventually you start talking more that way, and it starts getting more, you start getting more brutal based off of how the story goes. <laughs> and I think that would be a cool representation. Now, the reason why I say The Witcher is because I don't think The Witcher should really just be... It's like a, it's an rpg light game. It's not really a full-on... It's just... It's casual. It's, it's arcade combat. It's arcade. It is. It's just two-button clicks, three-button clicks, whatever it is. And your abilities, your signs are basic. It is not in depth. It's not really flushed out. It's just, it's a casual game. Witcher is a casual RPG. And for Assassin's Creed, that was not really an RPG, but which has been trying to kind of go more and more towards the RPG world. I think implementing the Witcher style of combat and how that kind of did, and doing what they did with Origin could make an awesome game. I think, I think Assassin's Creed in their new direction 
should be a casual RPG. Should be an action RPG. That's kind of not like a traditional action RPG, but that's because because that's how I view The Witcher. I view The Witcher as a light RPG, and I view Assassin's Creed as not an RPG. But Origin, they added stats and rare drops and things of that nature. And I think that if you added more of like Witcher style mechanics, you would get <coughs> excuse me again, you would get more of a good RPG feel with a world we know, right? So like The Witcher came out, everybody's like, this is really cool. It's you know, it's whatever it is. And there were people that were like, no, I want something like Morrowind or even Oblivion. I want something more like that. I don't want really The Witcher. And the people that like Assassin's Creed, I think would you know, so everybody that liked the hardcore RPG, I think, pulled back from Witcher. And I think everybody that likes Assassin's Creed would like more of a depth to Assassin's Creed. You know, I think they would like a depth towards the game instead of it just being another bungee jump without the rope, the bungee, into some thing of hay, you know, which was kind of getting out of control, which is kind of why they took the, the year or two off, right? So... I think if you added more of the Witcher type of mechanics, you know, being able to jump on things and kill it and stuff like that, and, and more dialogue options and different outcomes to stories, because that, that's definitely what Assassin's Creed is based off of. It's not based off that kind of open worldness, because there's an the story at the end is usually finite. The ending is usually set in stone, and <clears throat> although games like uh, Fable, where people maybe were more annoyed because you started out in Fable in one line and then you branched off this spider web or this tree of different outcomes, you eventually came back to the the only ending that Fable had. And people were like, eh, it kind of means that everything I did was kind of pointless. But in this, we kind of know about history in the world, in our world, and I can say, oh, cool, Cleopatra or whoever dies or whatever's going to happen in this or the kid does what whatever and the way of getting to that finite ending should be varied in every way which means they should take all the characters all the way up to the ending and they should flush all of them out and that way they could either live or die and then you kind of get your own kind of story even though the ending is set in stone it's all who's at the end so at the very end, you could have like this big party or something like that where we, we killed everybody or we won the war or whatever it is. And all the people around you are different to anybody else that plays it because you made the decision that got that person killed or saved that person's life or whatever. It shows the future and the, they had a kid or something. It's whatever. And then the people that are gone or dead, it shows the different ones or the burial sites of whoever you ended and the people that are still walking around or are stuck in prison being tortured forever. So normally in RPG, you don't want the ending to just be the ending. And in The Witcher, I think they had three or something endings. or They had multiple endings, but one is like the true ending, the other are garbage. And that's not a way that an ending should happen. That's just bad. Even in Skyrim, excuse me, <coughs> even in Oblivion, the ending is actually the same for the most part. It, it doesn't really change up. In Skyrim, you can just... It could be Stormcloaks or the Imperials. In Oblivion, it's it's just whatever. It's just how you got there. Fable kind of had this whole big you can do whatever you want kind of situation. And then you go, oh, well, it kind of just ends the same way. And for whatever reason, no one's really pissed about Oblivion because it's just there's so much variety. And if you took that variety but with Witcher mechanics and put it into a Assassin's Creed game, I think you get a game that everyone would love to play for the most part. Um, make it casual, but some more depth, because Assassin's Creed in general has been too casual. And then somehow flush out the other garbage that is the future. You know, Assassin's Creed Origins, Odyssey, you stay in the, the past, and then maybe the next one is very focused on the back and the forth. I don't know. Those are just my thoughts. That's kind of how I think about it. Kind of a long video. If you stay at the end, you can go ahead and uh, you know throw that high five. It's actually right there. Down in the comments down below, letting me know you stuck around. Usually it's like, give me a thumbs up, give me a like on the video if you stay to the very end, and give me a like if you want. Um, but go ahead and throw that high five down if you stay to the very end. I do really appreciate it. 
And with that, I'm going to get out of here. So thanks for watching. Thanks for hanging out. Like the video, like the content. You can always like, subscribe, and share. Remember, it's completely up to you. I do appreciate it, though. It does help me out some way or another. Once again, my name is Azrael, and I'll see you in whatever video I'm doing next. Later, guys.